I've always loved pixel art. There is something magical about trying to create captivating things under very tight constraints. I also find myself increasingly drawn towards tactile, physical things. Perhaps the increased ease of digital creation is pushing me a bit. So, some time ago, the idea of creating a knit-on-demand service started to materialize in my head. Granted, an endeavor like that, where users can design their own knitwear and then order it online, is not created overnight. Well, I have to admit, I also love the process of building, so I've been approaching this project more as a hobby, a labor of love, essentially giving me the long runway I need to pull this off myself. When working on large projects, I often find myself venturing down various trails of exploration, and one of those trails is what I'll show you today. Thanks a lot for watching this video. As you can see, I just started my channel. So if you like this sort of content, uh, please subscribe. It really would mean a lot. This video is just a fairly quick overview of the project. If there is demand, I plan on making a longer deep dive video. Anyway, back to the project. So I basically modified a relatively cheap plastic consumer manually driven knitting machine essentially turning it into a fully automatic multicolor machine capable of knitting tubes of whatever pattern you give it. Automatic multicolor knitting machines are, of course, nothing new. But I wanted to see if there was a cheap, scalable way to manufacture custom knitwear, a bit like how 3D printers in a print farm can print plastic objects on demand. Small, simple units that, in theory, require little oversight and if more capacity is needed, can be acquired cheaply. So I could try to make everything from scratch, but with knitting machines being the finicky creatures that they are, I opted to start with a fairly stable base to build on. After a bit of googling and review reading, I settled on a machine called the AliExpress King Size. It's a 46 needle hand cranked machine, originally intended to only knit single color small panels or tubes. Of course, clever people have already motorized the cranking part using electrical drills and whatnot, and others have also demonstrated that you can in fact alternate between yarns using your hands and in that way knit small multicolor patterns. But I wanted a fully automatic knitting machine that I could just give a picture and it would knit it. So the first step was to get acquainted with what was to form the base of my build. I tried and I experimented with all kinds of methods worthy of their own video. And what you see here is only a very small fraction worthy of keeping for reference. But a long story short, I settled on a method where I'm using three strands of yarn. Two strands in the front of the knitted piece to define the knitted pattern, and one strand on the back side to keep the structural integrity of the piece. You see, when a color is not needed in the pattern, the strand just hangs loosely on the back side, not doing anything good for the overall structure. So, by introducing a third strand on the back side that doesn't skip any stitches, we sort of have a permanent scaffolding that the pattern yarns can lean on. Like I said earlier, knitting machines are really finicky creatures. Working with organic, fairly inconsistent materials like yarn makes the whole endeavor a delicate balancing act, where changing one parameter can have unforeseen consequences in other places. So, sitting down and designing the entire machine in one go is definitely not the way to make a machine like this. It's very much an iterative process. Um, constantly tweaking both code and hardware as I go along. I started with the most basic functionality and worked outwards from there. The most important component in an automatic multicolor setup is probably the feeder head. The head is responsible for switching between the colored strands of yarn as the construction of the pattern progresses. My initial idea was to use solenoids, but 
I underestimated the pulling force of the yarn as the knitting took place. I had various ideas for other designs, but I settled on a setup where a rotary wheel with a groove would guide the feeder arms into place. And this design turned out to work really well. I also added optical sensors, so the machine would know which feed arm is currently active. So now that we can alternate between the colored yarns at will, we just need to advance the knitting needles in order to actually knit some stitches. So I made a large gear that I attached where the hand crank used to be. And this gear is then coupled with a smaller gear that is attached to a stepper motor. Here I also added an optical sensor in order to detect when the mechanism has advanced one needle. And that is basically the core of the setup. But of course, it's not that simple. You see, my goal was to have a machine that would require little oversight. But multiple things are missing from the equation in order to achieve that. Most notably, there is no tensioning system making sure that the yarn is being fed into the machine with the correct tension and taking up any slack when the needle is retracted a bit to allow the yarn feeders to switch place. And there is also no yarn runout detection, making sure to pause a machine when it runs out of yarn. Or a mechanism to pause a machine if there is a knot on the yarn. In short, I cannot leave this setup unattended without risking to destroy either the machine or the knitwear, or both. So my latest upgrade has been a tensioning system that also functions as a yarn runout detector. When the yarn runs out, an arm activates an optical sensor, putting the machine in a pause mode, allowing for me to change to a new skein of yarn. I can then restart the machine when I'm ready, and it will continue from where it stopped. So what is basically left for me to design is a knot detector, but that is already on the drawing board. However, when exactly that will be finished, I can't say, this being a labor of love and all. The whole setup is being driven by an old 3D printer board that is attached on top of an Arduino Mega. I could of course spend time designing my own PCB, but these off-the-shelf components are more than good enough for what I'm doing here, so at this point it would be a waste of time. The machine reads the patterns from an SD card, and there are just simple text files defining the colors of each stitch. These files are generated by my own custom software that can take pictures as input and create a low resolution dithered version of the original image. This is essentially the online software I hope to make public soon for my knit on demand service. Taking everything into consideration, I'm actually really thrilled with the level of stability that the current setup is displaying. And I think that my original goal of a low-cost multicolor knitting machine that requires little oversight is very much within reach. So I think that's all for now, but if you want to see where this is headed, or perhaps would like a deep dive video, then be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for your attention. Hope to see you again soon.